Oh, well, hello there, YouTube. We were just working on the Phoenix V2 2 meter by Volantix RC. It's a beautiful sailplane. Version 2, in fact. It's got the clippy dippy wings that slide in and clip, which is super fancy, like so. And then it's got these huge aluminum rods. These are hollow. There's two of them. Very strong, robust wing. Very much better. Very much improved hinging mechanism. It's not just a pinch joint, guys. Do you see that? Yeah, baby. There's a hinge in there. There's actually a hinge here, here, and here. And then on here, there's a hinge here and here. And here, there's a hinge, 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 hinge built into and embedded into the foam. Very nice. Carbon fiber spars all over the place. Very high quality. Uh, for what you're paying, this is an excellent deal. So now we're going to build it. Already did the decals. Now we're just looking over things, seeing how they tell to do it. And really, this is this is some super, super easy builds, okay? So if this is your first time building, don't be worried at all. It's going to be so easy that it's literally probably going to take less time than the decals. And you're going to be like, Brian, why are you making it sound so easy? It's, you're going to make it look easy. No, I'm not. It is easy. It's not me making it look easy. I'm just a dude doing this stuff. Okay. All right, here we go. Dump it out onto something white so it's easy to see. Screws. Screws you! So we're going to take these screws. We're going to put them in there. There's four of them. It's going to be very simple, guys. It's not going to be hard. Okay, so we're going to dump out the screws. We're going to keep the bag because I'm a hoarder, as you know. Then I'm going to dump these out. I'm going to put them there. They're the control rods. And then all these little rubbery things bounce out. Ooh, they're better than they were. Yes! Awesome! If you don't want to use the crappy stuff that comes with the plane, just use your fuel tube. It works even better. Oh, wow. These are big ones. Look at that. Big control arms. Not that I care because I'm going to go to the inside hole. What? Okay, and then these are the uh, control rods for the, excuse me, the, uh, the control horns for the servos. Okay, so it looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Sweet, we got the sixer, guys. It even comes as a screwdriver, for goodness sakes. Although I'm probably not going to use that. I'm going to use my awesome flight test one. This thing is one of my favorite screwdrivers. Made by flight test. It says 4.0 plus. Okay, evidently that means something to somebody, somewhere. Not me, though. Okay, so the screws go in first. Yeah, see? Vertical stabilizer. Into the hole. Into the hole. See? Look, like this. You gotta assemble it in order. Otherwise, there will be no way to reach. Because this is plastic on the bottom, guys. Okay. Not rocket science, but you know what else is cool about this? Now, that screw holds this plastic to this foam and to that plastic, which is held on to this by glue. So, if your glue fails, you're screwed. You'll notice it before it happens mid-flight, more than likely. That's like an asterisk on your cell phone bill. More than likely. Tight! It's tight like a tiger. Okay, here we go. And we're going to stick it in the hole right there. Whoa! Right there. We've got four screws to put in there, guys. This is going to take like all of 30 seconds to a minute. But with me doing it, add five or six times as long. Uh-oh, uh-oh, whoa, whoa, got it. Whew. Okay, this screwdriver sucks, I hate this thing. I'm just kidding, it's awesome. I just need this big long one. It'll make it easier to reach around this wing. Okay, this is the number two Phillips Craftsman. Probably will be just outside of, the, yep, it's what I was figuring after I got done explaining how awesome it was gonna be. Um, okay, another trick you can do, you can take uh, one of these little dilly bops right here. Take your number one screwdriver, okay? Find the correct, appropriately sized nut driver, which will help you reach. In this case, that's the wrong size also, so I'm going to take this one. 
Ooh, look at that. That's the correct size. That'll work. And you see how fancy the ant if that thing is wiggly and it drives you crazy, you know how you fix that? You just do one of these. You take some tape off the wall and you go right like that. It's gonna work so good. Okay, that was fun. And we've not quite gained enough length. Story of my life. Well, it is working. Maybe I should have just stuck with the flight test one. So once this all gets assembled, it's going to be glorious. This thing is going to fly great. It's going to be awesome. You're going to want to buy your own. Check the description below. We should have a link for you there. And you can get your very own from Banggood, of course. Thanks, Banggood, for sending this to me so that we can evaluate how awesome it is. And by the way, since I asked for it, I already know it's going to be awesome. And by the way, it's going to be every bit as awesome, if not more awesomer. For all you English teachers out there, it's going to be more awesomer than these. I guarantee it's a version 2 after all. Better be more awesomer. But you know what, guys? You know me. If it's horrible, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll warn you. And then you can just watch my huge embarrassing failure and save your very own for another plane. But in this case, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. And I am truly confident they've improved this thing a lot. Um, since even when I did the 2.6 meter one, which honestly hadn't been all that long. So what can you expect from this video series? Well, we're going to do a build. We're going to do a radio setup. May not be on this video. Maybe the next video may be part of this video. Haven't decided yet. Depends on how short this is. We already did the decals. Check the description below. We'll link to all that good stuff. Oh, are you kidding me? When I drop screws, I pause it. Look at that thing. Look. It fell. I hate it when I drop screws on the floor, especially in this room, because I, I put rugs all over the floor. Like some sort of a rug fanatic. It's actually pretty nice to have rugs on the floor, because then you can... Uh, you know, like drop something that's on fire and, you know, you don't burn the house down. You just burn up one rug. Going back to the flight test screwdriver, you might have noticed. My pride was getting the best of me. And so now I'm going back to the screwdriver that was supposed to be used in the first place. Okay, we're going to try the uh, factory one here because this is really... it's. You see, I had this problem on the first Volantex where you just... You get into this nasty spot and there's just like nowhere to put your hand. See, it's like, where, uh, uh, uh. it doesn't seem like it should be that hard, but it totally is. It's really annoying. Um, but like I said, I'm going to forgive Volant Volantix for this because uh, there is more, one, more than one way to skin a cat. You see how long this is? Guys, this is fairly long, okay? I'm just going to be a smart feller, not a fart smeller. And we're just going to do it right now. We're just going to fix this problem right up. And it's going to be awesome. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Yeah, baby. Get in there. Yes. Yes. It's going to work. Yes. Yes. Should have probably done that earlier. Better late than never. Yes. That worked. Phenomenal. Okay. Very nice. Alright, so just real quick inspection. Make sure that everything looks... Oh yes, that is gold. Just Got a pretty good amount of strength here. I mean, I'm wiggling it with some level of strength. And it seems to be pretty, pretty sturdy. From that load and sturdy from this load of course this moves and this moves and we have a lot of range of motion that's awesome guys okay cool so now the next thing we need to do is uh go ahead and start control horns and all that jazz that's going to take a little bit of cleanup and i'll come right back all right guys i guess i should probably talk about this for a second i talked about it in previous videos it's not complicated um you see how there's a short thing here and then a long thing here goes all the way through that's how you can tell which one gets the long rod and which one gets the short rod okay you stick the short rod in here it'll go in there but it's not going to give you much purchase because then your long rod's not going to reach does that make sense 
See, they stick out unevenly, but again, unevenly to the extent that you're gonna use this one here in a few minutes and it's gonna have the same configuration, short, long, okay? So that's true on the ASH-28 by Volantix, awesome plane as well, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually just, um, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of assembling this just to get you guys a view of what it looks like because it is gold, just, wow, look at that. They have these doohickeys here. They actually cut, with the laser, they cut a channel in there. That is so nice of them. So that means that there is technically uh, two wires that are held up here with of which there should be a Y cable that will be splitting off to each of the components, the flaps and the ailerons. Of course, these are the flaps, these are the ailerons, okay? In, incidentally, the flaps are not cut out yet, so we're gonna cut those wedges before we get out the, the drill. I'm gonna show you how to do this, it's super complicated. You take this, this X-Acto knife, you go flat along the surface, and you just little chop sewage, ooh, chop sewage, gross. And then you're just gonna chop red meow. Then you're gonna take the appropriate uh, screwdriver that you have lying right next to your work. You're just gonna pick it out. Okay, ooh, ooh, careful, careful now, careful. And if you wanna do that even more clean, you can use a hot blade and it will get that just super, super neat. Okay, now that is not, there's one more little chunk over here. Again, this is super duper easy stuff, but you do actually have to do it. And sometimes people get a little freaked out by this stuff because they're like, what if, what if I make a mistake? What if I make a mistake? Will I not be able to fly near the hospital? That's a joke for anybody who's read these Chinglish manuals. They say no flying near hospitals, which I don't know. Honestly, I think that'd be kind of nice. You know, it's like you're stuck in a hospital. You're recovering from surgery, let's say. Airplanes flying outside. That would be my idea of a hospital visit. Yes. Very nice. A little bit of resistance. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if I really have a problem with that. See, that's maybe not so hot. See how it's wanting to open up that joint? You know, if you're into that sort of thing, I'm okay with it, actually. I think I'm going to leave it. Because I think that's going to happen to some of you folks, and I want you to know what to expect and when to expect it. So you can watch my failures, and you can either avoid them or just go ahead and do them, too. Okay, here we go. Just following along that same angle with the X-Acto knife in an exact fashion. Here we go. I'm just gonna follow along again. Not particularly concerned about the exact final outcome of the look, but I do want the control surface to work properly. Okay, so I cut, 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 and I'm just gonna push it up. And you're probably thinking, but Brian, flaps don't go up. Well, they could. If you wanna do a full length control surface, that'd be kinda cool. Um, I don't think I'm doing that on this. I think I'm probably going to end up using a stabilizer like a weakling. And for those of you who like stabilizers, I also like stabilizers. Do I need a stabilizer? I don't know. Probably not, but I like them. Even if I don't need it, it's kind of like, well, Brian, you don't need safe. Well, no, I don't need safe at all. Brian, you don't need S3X. No, but I want it. I don't need radio-controlled airplanes either. I want them. Well, I shouldn't say that. I kind of do need them, but somewhere between need and want. You know what I mean, Gene? Sounds like a squeaky door. I can live with it. Ooh, that one was a little bit stiff. I got it all worked out. Just rubbed it off real quick, you know. Just kind of... Sorry, I meant my terminology a little bit there. All right, so the answer to everybody's question is, what the heck, why are there only two wires there? Aren't you gonna need like four? Because there's four servos? No, not necessarily. Um, one says channel two, one says channel, channel two. <laughs> Evidently they both say channel two. So um, here's what's gonna happen. At some point there's gonna be a flaps channel, which is gonna be one Y cable, and then there'll be two aileron channels for a total of three, okay? 
That way I can do a flap arounds and flaps, which is going to give me the ability to have flaps come down. Oh, everything's great. Flaps come down more. Okay, so take off flaps, landing flaps. Aileron continues to operate to roll the plane. Flaps come down. Ailerons go up and continue to operate the plane roll. Okay, roll control. That gives me crow or butterfly or whatever you want to call that. Okay, air brakes. So, again, the other thing is I'll mix in on my flaps. I'll mix something like this where it's like one little bit like this. And then I usually don't do that because the outboard portion just destabilizes the plane, makes it understable. So then I'll just go up a little bit and I'll go up a lot and it's going to be awesome. Okay, and I'll show you how to do all that stuff with your radio system, provided you have this exact radio. You can follow on ex exactly. Or if you have a Gen 2, pretty much any of the Gen 2 ones are going to work the same way, plus or minus a couple of features. But you get the idea. So, now that we've got the flaps freed up, we can start exploring these cables. One cable, two cables. One is longer than the other, Brian. What does that mean? Well, it means they either use an extremely long cable for this one, or they have the same length cable, and this one goes to that, and that one goes to this, okay? I'm willing to gamble that that's what's happened. Now, why would you gamble on that? Because I've done this a few times. Also, notice they have a CG mark on the wing, molded into the wing. Gorgeous. Very good. They need to just do that all the time on every radio-controlled airplane that's made of foam, okay? It would be nice. I would like it. Some of you would think, well, I could mark it myself. Well, you go ahead and mark it yourself. Um, okay, so we have a short one and a long one. Well, how do we tell, Brian? I don't know what to do. This one must be the short one, and this one must be the long one. There is a way to do this. Guys, the super easy way is to use one of these fancy-dancy tools, these little servo testers. In my experience, I've killed every servo I use with it, so I'm just not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind my radio like this. I'm going to go beep. It's going to turn on. Okay. I'm on my Timber UMX. System setup. Yes. Model select. Go all the way down to add a new. Create. It's in the process of creating. It takes time to create. As you know, the RF is off because the orange light is off. Okay, aircraft type, normal, we'll just go to flaperons, and notice how I'm not doing this here, two ailerons and one flap, that will complicate things drastically, and I'm not doing any of that crap, okay, I'm not doing that crap, not doing that crap, that's way too complicated, if I try to use my um, seven channel receiver and use all the seven channels, that's great. But if I want a stabilizer, I, I want it to be more simple, which this is going to do it for me. Okay? Flap rounds, folks. And then the tail is normal, as you can see. We don't even have a high tail. But if it was a high tail, it would be the same. Then I'm going to go next, and I'm going to change the pretty picture all the way at the end to the reject section. That's where I live. Look at that. That one's really fast. Okay, so that's close enough. It shows a powered sailplane-ish thing, okay? Now I'm going to go to model name. I'm going to tediously name this model, and I'm going to pause it while I do it. Okay, Pohenix. It's a Phoenix. V2. V2. And I want to make sure to designate that it is a two meter, two meter and that's going to help me know because as you guys all know I will end up with another one that's similar and it's going to be a different size more than likely. I'll probably get this in a 1.6 configuration as well because it's such a great plane. Okay so now channel assign, we're not going to mess with any of that left, we're just going to leave it alone. Okay, we're going to go back out to the main screen. Okay, got it. First thing we're going to set up is throttle cut for safety. I set it up here. It's easy to stay out of the way somewhat. I don't know why they set it to default to minus 130, but I set it to minus 100. And then I use my throttle stick to 
I'm actually going to take this thing off. I use a lanyard most of the time, guys. Okay, so then I check. I move the throttle stick and I look at the monitor down here and I see if it's moving. So it's currently working. Now it's running the throttle up and down. Okay, all right, so we're good. So we can go back off of that and then we can go to the timer. And I want it to be set to one out with tone and vibrate. One out is active, which means when the stick goes up over 25%, it starts counting down. When it goes back down, it keeps running. Okay, now why would you set it to five minutes, Brian? Because the way I fly, it's more like a regular plane. If you're truly doing sailplane flight, you probably don't want one out active because you only want it to be on when you're running your throttle, okay? Speaking of throttle, let's go ahead and put on the prop. You may have noticed that I haven't, well, you know what, we'll actually wait and be safe and not chop our fingers off and wait and do that later, okay? Like, good example, RC community people, you know, don't want to make anybody upset here. Okay, so we're going to pop this off. There's pins here and here. So you kind of have to peel this thing off. See this? Like that. And then you can walk it down the length and it'll pop right out for you. This is an FPV mount. There is a release here. Okay? That release thins it up so that it pops out. Very well designed. I like it a lot. We're not going to use it. Okay? Look at this, guys. Ooh, look. Nice dimples. One, two, three, four. Just like I said, it's so weird. It's like I'm a future teller. Okay. Also, did you hear from that noise? It's plastic. It's kind of heavy. Not real thrilled with that, but it's better than having some chintzy plastic cover. A chintzy plastic cover. Oh, wait. Never mind. Those things break super easy. That's one of the weak spots on that plane. Okay, Volantix 30 amp BSC. We got uh, four wires here. Interestingly enough, they were smart enough to leave us a slit. That means you can feed the cable through and then pull the wire through the slit. So even though you have this big end, you can still feed it through. Very, very, very good. Nice. Okay, see the motor up there spinning? Make sure it's free. Room for a 2200 3S. Want to make sure that this thing isn't going to be a problem. I don't think it is. And then our receiver is probably going to sit up there because I want it to be somewhat close to the center gravity-ish area because I'm going to have a stabilizer at some point, maybe um, external. I might go to a Lemon RX later, but for now I'm going to use this. You know what? Maybe I'll set it up without stabilizer and then we can add that later. And that'd be a good video for you people that are adding stabilizers at a later date. Okay, as you can see, it comes with an XT60. That is my connector of choice. May not be your connector of choice. If it's not, good for you. Use whatever trips your trigger. Okay. These are called forceps or hemostats. Hemostats because you can clamp them on a vein and then stop the heme from flowing. I don't know if that's right, but still, we'll pretend. Or, you know, people in the 70s would use these for other fun projects. Um, excuse me, 70s, 60s, 60s. Long before I was born. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this wire as I pass it through. Yes, right there. There we go. Pass it through. Oh, you son of a gun, you would. Okay, so I'm going to just pass it through. Watch what happens, guys. I'm going to show you how this works. Grab with the hemostats. Pull it up. Get the wire to pass through the crack. Okay, I'm going to actually hold the wire and just very carefully nudge it so that it's aligned. And then I'm going to walk it into the crack, just like this, guys, just like this. Then I'm going to push that little weird magnet thing, which is also known as a ferrite core. The ferrite core hypothetically reduces the amount of interference that passes through the wires and back to the device. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I mean, it's been used for many, 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 many pieces of equipment. Um, not the least of which is this plane, but it is weight and it isn't an airplane. And I'm not sure of the validity of the technology in this application, but we're going to go with it. Okay, so the reason we're doing all this is that we can get our control horns installed, which are here, 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 here. Okay? We also have a motor that's going to be running at some point, and we aren't bound and we don't have our radio opened. So I think at this point, 
there's not a really a whole lot more that needs to be done on the physical assembly aside from the prop. You know what, what the heck, we're going to throw caution to the wind for the sake of this video. Notice that that nut is not coming out, that's normal. Take your screwdriver, undo the two screws. We're going to try to get all the physical build done. And then what we'll do is we'll probably, even though we started the radio setup, we will continue the radio setup in the second video because we're going to run out of time here pretty soon. Okay, so we'll peel that up, lay it down. See that nut? It's loose. We will push down so that this will be held. Get the nut off, get the washer off, just like that. Okay? Now watch. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. See? Now it's free. Cool. You can fix it. You can use it for other things. Whatever you want to do. This is a collet. Okay? This thing, as it closes, it will squish onto the prop shaft. And it's going to be fantastical. Watch this. Watch this. Okay? So just imagine that happening when it's on the shaft. Stick the shaft in the hole. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Secondly, stick this thing on that thing. Put this thing, washer, onto the other thing. Noticing it fits perfectly. Then grasp and spin your nut. Hold your prop while you spin your nut. I'm gonna go get a, I'm gonna go get the world's best type of wrench. A crescent wrench. Also known as a sizable wrench. Not to be confused with a crescent wrench, which is a branded copyright protected device. Okay? This is not. See how I tighten that, guys? Worked really nice. Almost as good as a crescent wrench. If it was a crescent wrench with the name brand, it would have worked twice as good. Alright, so now you can see that that is attached to the motor. Very nicely. Now I can take this spinner and I can stick the spinner onto the front of the thingy. Which would probably be called the prop adapter. Now I'm going to tighten these screws like a professional. Just until they're tight. It's going to be perfect. Then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to do it all over again. It's like deja vu. Alright, it's tight. It's tight like a tiger. Oh, that is gorgeous. Except that it's kind of ugly. It looks like some sort of a mustache. Look at this mustache. Ooh, Volantex. Here's a thought. Maybe of all these V2 upgrades, you could upgrade this ugly nose cone. The ugliest part of this plane, which actually is not a big deal. This one, this one looks a little bit better. See what happens is you get this angle here, and it goes like from this angle to like, and it just looks bad. This one agrees better. But even if you get into the more expensive planes, but like this one here, the white just blends a little bit better. I may end up painting it at some point. But for now, guys, you get the idea. I am going to physically stick the wings in the holes, and I'm going to put this canopy on just so you can see what it looks like, and we can pretend like we built it, okay? But you and I know we're not going to be building it. We still got to do all the control harms, okay? But that's just, it's just going to have to fall into the radio setup. It just makes better sense there, okay? So we're going to feed these things through, and uh, might be easier on the initial poke through. See how stiff it is going through? I'm just going to twist, twist as I go, okay? If this really gives you trouble, see how it's going through? It's poking through. It's like the turtle's poking here. You can lubricate this, believe it or not. Really easy way to get those through. Lube the shaft, ram it in. You could lube it with this if you wanted. It would be very failure-esque. You could lube it with something like this WD-40. Hey, I don't have a link to this, but you can buy it anywhere. Literally anywhere. Put a little on a rag. Rub the shaft. Get a little bit of that solvent on there. Ah, oh, eat, oh, 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 it's going, finally. Oh, there it goes. Whoa, I'm into the lube. Oh, buddy. Woo! 
that went quick when it did finally go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and stick that into this one here, and this other one's gonna go into there. Okay, it's gonna go really smooth. These wires I'm gonna stick into the hole, just right there. Okay, now it's kind of like, nah, it's fighting me again. That son of a gun. Okay, watch this, guys. There's a trick to this. Watch this. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna wipe some lube from a rag right onto the shaft, just like this. Quick until it goes. Okay, and we're just feeding it through the holes. Okay, if this really honestly gives you problems, seriously take a drill, chuck it in your drill, spray the lube, run it in and out several times. I want mine nice and tight when I stick it in. Okie dokie. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put this together. Also, if you lube these, they go in easier here, too. All the stock of lube and penetration. Seems like a good time to be done with this video. All right, and, and watch this, guys. Watch it, watch, watch, watch it. You see, it's not clicked. Oh yeah, baby, she's clicked. Put that out of the way. I'm gonna stick this in the hole now, ready? Woo, full penetration. Partial penetration. Okay, wait on it. Don't stick your wire into that crack. You will regret it. <clears throat> okay, ready? Here goes, guys. Watch this. Got to spin. Whoa, whoa, watch out for other planes. Yeah, baby. Listen for the click. Yes! Oh, yes. That thing is... Oh, jeez, running into all sorts of planes and things. Guys, look at this. Look at this gorgeous. That thing is gorgeous. It looks so good, I want to go fly it now, but I don't have a radio battery or any controls. You know where to find it, guys. Come back for more. Brian Phillips signing out. This is part two of the build for V2. Phoenix V2 by Volantix RC. That thing looks great. We're going to do a little more radio setup next. Come back for more. If you need help, I'm here for you. And I'm going to show you how awesome this thing flies if it's the last thing I do at the end of that video.